Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for high-level traders to learn valuable trends and strategies, connect with other top traders, and become consistently profitable. Click the link in the description of this video to receive a special offer on our revolutionary PS60 training, access to our daily chat room filled with experienced traders, and so much more. Space is limited, so make sure you don't miss out. We look forward to seeing you in the room. Hey guys, good morning everybody and welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend update show. This will probably be the last weekend update show uh, for 2018. Uh, I want to wish all our friends that are uh, joining us via uh, stock tweets, Twitter and obviously uh, the YouTube uh, platform. Hopefully you guys have been uh, doing well in the markets. Uh, Crazy year obviously. Uh, but very, very trader. We'll talk about that in a second. But again, I want to wish everybody uh, and their families a very, very he healthy and happy uh, holiday season. Uh, this really is the best time of year. You really reflect on how great life is and the fact that you're alive and you're breathing and you wake up in the morning, you see your children's faces and your wife and spouses and husband's faces and your grandkids, all that good stuff, depending on what part of your uh, life you're in, but it's an awesome, awesome time. And I just want to make sure that everybody really understands what the whole point of life is. Uh, the stock market is a stock market. Again, at the end of the day, it's a job like anything else. Your overall uh, family, home, happiness is the most important part. Everything else is kind of a cherry on top. So uh, let's talk about the markets. Okay. Let's talk about the markets. Uh, last week, right? If you guys, uh, if all you guys are only follow me uh, on the weekend update, uh, you remember last week uh, we talked about something that I probably haven't said in, in probably in a decade. Okay, that last week was probably one of the wildest weeks uh, I can remember. Uh, Monday, last Monday session, I got literally ran over. I mean, literally ran over. The spreads were completely wide. The liquidity were dead. You get one buyer that shows up if you're short, you're dead. If you get one seller that shows up if you're long, you're dead. Uh, and what we saw was very, very scary last Monday was the whole market structure. I mean, literally the whole market stru structure collapsed right in front of me and had nothing to do with a bear market. Again, we've been yes, and I'm saying it again. I've been saying this bear market ever since we clicked below the 200-day moving average, and now media officially, it's a bear market. Okay, so apparently we're not in a pause anymore or a correction. At least they acknowledge we're in a bear market. Okay, cool, great. Again, lipstick on a pig, it's still a pig. So nothing changed materialistically from last Monday to what we've been doing, especially since, again, the double top, again, for those of you guys who have been following me week after week after week, this is just kind of a structural balance of what we've been going through. And you know, once we close below the 200-day moving average, that's it. That was the sell signal. And the most important part was structure. Again, what's the most important bit for any trader? I don't care what you trade. The most important part is having structure. You have to have the ability to control risk, that you control your emotions, control the trade. Right, control everything that you need that's going to make your trade very, very progressive from an adult point of view. You're not a you know, deer in headlights, you're not hoping, you're not praying. We're not in the hoping and praying business, we're in the collecting data, okay, identifying sentiment and waiting for confirmation business. That's all we are. And last Monday, we had none of that, okay. The market was going up, stocks were getting destroyed. Two, three, four dollar spreads. The market was going down. Stocks found bids and started exploding up. So the market structure was incredibly bad last Monday. It kind of spilled over to Tuesday. And as we talked about, obviously in the live webinar, we see the, the different quality of trades we had from Wednesday to Friday. You started slowly but surely seeing how the market structure came back, right? You saw the pivots were moving a lot more smoother. There wasn't a lot of hiccups. Yes, it was the liquidity. Uh, not as where we want to be, of course not, because again, we're in a bear market that translates into less market participants. But again, at the end of the day, a trade is a trade is a trade, and a pivot is a pivot is a pivot. So towards the back end of last week, we started talking about how you know better the structure was, and we closed out the week well. Okay, and the the the, the question going into this week was not if we were going to continue to sell. Our biggest problem was, well, is the market structure going to restore or will we see a repeat of what we saw last Monday? And we quickly got our answer, okay? Quickly got our answer. 
Very, very good, solid trading week. Okay, really, really good for all you guys, especially who've been following me on stock twits and Twitter. I mean, it, I've been trading, I've been putting these pivots as close as as close as real time as possible. I mean, really, because I really got, want you guys to see the power of the pivot within like 20, 30 cents of a Netflix pivot or so. And I really want you to see the power of the pivot and what you could really achieve uh, when you understand this process. And this week was really good, man. We saw some incredible moves, very violent, very, very aggressive, and they were very, very structured. And again, there was absolutely no difference. I mean, last week, the indexes got crushed. This week, again, look at the scoreboard. Uh, you know, the NASDAQ, the Dow Jones had their worst week. I mean, really, really think about this. They really had their worst week since 2008. Again, what was it, 2008? Oh, by the way, that was Armageddon, right? You guys remember the mortgage crisis? So materialistically, are we there? No. I mean, but again, you have to look at the data and kind of figure out why this market's selling off. So you look at the data, right? So you had the Fed on Wednesday. You had the Fed on Wednesday. And here were the bullet points, okay? You have real estate slowing down, right? Real estate slowing down. Uh, everybody knows about the problem with student loan, right? It's starting to build and build and build and build. And everybody, a lot of it, well, I can't say everybody, but a lot of economists are whispering the word recession, recession, right? Recession. So logically, what, are the, what does the Fed do? They raise rates. Okay. Again, new math is working. One plus one equals six. So the market gets destroyed. I mean, completely destroyed. The market goes from up 300 to down you know, a hundred in like seconds. Um, I've, I've rarely seen Amazon go down 40 points within 40 seconds. That's what we saw. We saw Netflix going down like eight points in 40 seconds. So the, the people who bought into the Fed, they got massacred, absolutely massacred. And again, when you really think logically and take a step back, uh, I, I was talking about in the live webinar, you would have to be on some serious pills, serious, serious pills to get long minutes before the Fed was going to come out with an announcement in a bear market up 300 points a day. Where was your value? Where was your safety net? Unfortunately, all those traders who couldn't answer those questions or foresee what the possible outcome could be, they felt the ramifications of what actually did happen. So very, very violent week to the downside. Um, and here's the key point. You know, here's the really uh, key scenario that we talked about on the queues the whole week. This 155 on the queues, okay, 155 on the queues, excuse me, 156 on the queues was the weekly trend line, right, guys? We've been talking about this weekly trend line for two weeks. And I said, any close below 156, 155 is very, very bearish. And I said, well, there's a puncher's chance it could spill over into next year and we could test that 146 level. I didn't, when I said next year, I didn't expect to see two days from that, you know, two days from, from my, my point. And we went down again, stocks trade from su support to support, right? And we bounced and we held that 146 level. So you can see how aggressive this market is. You can see how aggressive technical analysis, analysis can be. The only question is, are you embracing technical analysis or are you running away from it? Okay, that's it. it. It's all, it's not scary, okay? It's not scary if you are in control. The problem is, unfortunately, social media is a lot of new traders exposure, okay? Um, the only thing that you know about the stock market is social media, okay? And all you keep on hearing is, you gotta sit on hands, cash is a position. You gotta sit on hands, you cash is a position. And all you're doing is completely negating half the market, okay? You're completely negating half the side of the market, half the ledger that you can trade on and you can do very, very well, okay? In a bull market, when the market's going up, it takes like two hours for some of these stocks to go up $2. In a bear market, when you have a pivot and the algo hits at the same time, you could catch a $10 candle within three minutes. Again, we're seeing this over and over and over again. So if you know all this, why are you completely putting yourself or eliminating yourself from the equation, okay, of trading both sides of the market? Again, God gave you two eyes, two ears, uh, two feet, two hands, right? Why would you possibly eliminate half the market that you can take incredibly aggressive action on? And again, I, I really do believe it's the lack of informational, proper information that you're dealing with. Again, when I started, I was on a trading desk with some incredible, incredible traders. We had that intimate, personal relationships that we built as a human element that we sat next to each other. We conversed, we spoke, 
We understood concepts. We understood why things were happening. We had the human element. And now, unfortunately, again, this is reality. Unfortunately, all you have at your disposal is these random avatars with silly avatars in front of them of a car or this, that, the other thing. And the reality, they're 22-year-olds teaching 21-year-olds how to make money in the market, which is incredibly insane. If you really think about it and you break it down to the bare bones, the only thing you need as, as an aspiring trader is embrace technical analysis. That's it. Okay, you don't need me. You don't need you. You don't need the other guy down the road. All you need to do is adapt personal, you know, personal responsibility and just accept that technical analysis does work. Again, you don't need to trade pivots. You can trade options, futures, Forex, Bitcoin, whatever you want to trade, okay? But accept there's always an other way that you can make money. And the one thing that I keep on seeing over and over again, and it's really, again, for me, it doesn't make a difference. I'm not in that world. Um, my life doesn't change one way or another if you're trading these things or not. I used to trade um, small caps for about seven years, okay, about six, seven years. And I found out one day that, well, I'm starting to lose my edge. And for two weeks, about two, three weeks went by, and I started losing an edge, and I started losing consistency, and I had to make that tough choice that, well, you know what, maybe there is no more money left in these things, okay? And again, can you make money once in a while, you catch a run or this, that, the other thing? Yeah, that's fine and dandy, but it really, it really woke up to the fact that the consistency level in these names were gone. So I had to make a choice, okay? I had to make a real, real choice. Um, I could sit there and try to grind it out and grind it out and grind it out and burn mental equity. Uh, because again, you started seeing all these small cap alert services with 1,000, 2,000 people, and they kept on skewing these trades over and over again. I, I used to buy a stock and you know my, my whole thing was, well, I wanted to swing this thing with like a 15 cent stop for two weeks, three weeks. And the next thing I know, I was getting stopped out 35, 40 cents later in 30 minutes because they were all buying these things. They were all dumping these things. So I lost that edge, okay? And I had to make the decision and I left. I, I know a lot of you guys, and unfortunately, um, a lot of you guys, especially new, who, who, you're not well capitalized. Okay, I get that, okay? I, I do get that. Um, but again, you're force-fed, spoon-fed, you know, spoon that the only things that you could trade is small cap stocks. And I'm telling you as the day is old, the, there's a huge universe, guys. I promise you, there's a huge universe out there. Again, I don't care if you trade with me, if you don't trade me, that, that's your prerogative. But I'm telling you for your, for your incredible longevity-based case, you should really try everything. There's futures, there's options, um, anything that you want to trade. There's big caps, there's mid caps, there's beta, right? There's something out there that you're not familiar with. But unfortunately, a lot of new traders, okay, they're in that position of kind of a bad marriage, okay? I mean, raise your hand. This is a very, very honest question. A lot of you guys started trading in the last three years, right? In the last three years. Three years, we've had one of the biggest rabid bull markets that I can remember, okay? Raise your hand if you've made a dent in your trading career, okay? And these are trading the hot stocks. These are trading the stocks that everybody wants to be in. This is trading the sexy. This is trading uh, Times Square with the bright lights, okay? Again, in the most rabid bull market, okay, that I can remember in the last 20 years, okay? One of the biggest ones, okay? And again, you don't need to answer me. It's all self-reflection. At some point, you have to look in the mirror and say, look, if I want to be a professional trader, okay, I have to find my edge. I don't care what that edge is. I have to find it. And if you have to try out, okay, six, seven different ways of trading, eight different ways of trading, nine different ways of trading, you do what you have to do to find your edge. How long? Again, can you really afford to go another year, okay, with going through the same cycle? And oh, by the way, Who's to say we are going to turn around in 2019, okay? There are no breakouts, okay? There's technical damage in every single stock out there. Yes, you're going to have days that you can have rabid dead cat bounces, three, four, 500 points. The problem is every single chart is broken, okay? You have no course of reference. You have no safety net. You can't just close your eyes and say, I'm going to buy the stock 
and hope it goes higher. You need a course. You need an exit point. And with dead cat market bounces, okay, the only thing that we've been seeing that's really, really aggressive are ranges, okay? This is what's the greatest part about pivots are. We don't care. Look, do I want a bull market? Of course I want a bull market. The reason why is the liquidity is a lot better, okay? Um, there's much more market participants, which means, well, we can take advantage of uneducated traders on the other side of our trades. And the market is much more fluid. And by the way, everybody's in a good mood. Uh, everybody loves life. The food tastes better. You're better looking, right? Everything is better in a bull market. However, we don't need a bull market, okay? And the greatest part about trading pivots are you have points of interest, okay? You have supply and you have demand. When the stock confirms supply, okay? Think about it. Stock confirms supply, it goes higher. And the stock confirms demand, it goes lower. So do we want a bull market? Absolutely. But if we don't get a bull market, you know what? We'll be okay too. And again, at some point, you have to turn around and say, how long can I afford to sit on my hands? How long can I turn around and say cash is a position? How long can I trade a market that is incredibly, let's be honest, incredibly manipulated? Okay. And this isn't a good market. And now I have to make a career trying to squeeze water out of a rock. Again, these are all personal questions. These are questions that I had to face with um, for a long, long period of time. And finally, I just had to find a better way. And hopefully for 2019, every single new aspiring trader will put themselves in a position that they could actually win instead of actually hope. So crazy market, right? Crazy market. Again, worst week since uh, 2008. Okay. Crazy action. Again, if you look at from the macro point, this is kind of where we're going into uh, next week and possibly into the new year. Now this 146 becomes uh, kind of a big deal. Okay. Uh, 146 on the NASDAQ 100 becomes a big deal. Any close below 146, you can see it, right? Any close below 146, we are headed to about 141. Okay. And again, stocks trade from support to support, to support, to support, to support, to support. So again, is there any guarantee we're going to go up in 2019? Absolutely not. We're not fortune tellers. Okay. We're not trying to predict the future. We're trying to gather information, collect data, understand where the sentiment is and wait for confirmation. And that's it. That's all we're trying to do. Uh, very good. I, I, I thought this week was really good. Okay. Uh, I only traded for – I can't even say I traded even, even on Friday. Uh, I put on a couple of positions on Amazon. Um, very, very good, solid, very good, solid week. Uh, there was only like three pivots, three or four pivots, uh, that triggered on Friday. I was done by, I think I traded for like, I was in the room for like an hour and a half, an hour and 40 minutes. I was just, my mind wasn't already into it. I want to just kind of, uh, start my weekend. But again, you don't need a lot. Okay. You really don't need a lot. And here, you know, here were some pivots, uh, here are some pivots. Again, these are, this is from the, the, the private Twitter feed. And just to, just to give you guys a really, really quick announcement, uh, January 1st, okay? January 1st, we have, uh, as, as everybody knows, we have a private Twitter feed uh, that's only 20 bucks a month. Okay, guys, if you can't sit in front of your computer uh, and you can't make it to the live webinar, obviously, people ask me all the time, well, what's the difference between the live webinar and uh, the private Twitter feed? Number one, the tw private Twitter feed is 20 bucks. Okay, it's less than a dollar, it's less than a dollar a day to be there. And it's just strictly pivots, okay? I don't tell you how to trade these pivots. Uh, the live webinar is strictly hands-on trader development. We show you how to trade these pivots, what to do, what not to do. You see everything playing out live. You see all my executions. You see why these stocks are trading, all that good stuff. Nobody's trying to trick anybody. It's all about developing really good, savvy adult traders. That's all it is. That's all it is. No nonsense, no BS in between. We trade real stocks with tremendous order flow, and these pivots are real. So the most important part on Friday's session was um, some pretty good size, some, some pretty good size little moves. Uh, we tweeted this out early in the morning. Uh, only I think only like three or four uh, pivots uh, triggered. Uh, one of them was Nike. I forgot to post this. One of them was Nike. Uh, it only went up 30 cents. Again, it's very, very tough to buy stocks uh, in a bull market. Here was the pivot on Nike. And again, it only went up like 30 cents uh, and came right back down with the rest of the market. But here was the pivot. Uh, off this uh, 7385, 74 area, went to like 7430. So that one uh, failed. But if you look at uh, some pretty big stuff, and again, here's my point about the you know pivots. They don't have a bias. You know they don't care which way the market goes. So here is the ranges for Friday. You had 137 to the upside, right? And you had 135 to the downside. That's it. Okay, we don't care about what happens in between. We don't care about 135, 39. We don't care about 136, 34. We care about building above 137. Or building below 135 and you see why right and you see exactly why 
And here is the pivots right here. It was 137, right? 137. And all this down here was 135, right? 135, 135, 135, 135, 135. Stock got destroyed, completely destroyed. And not only did it break the 35, it broke uh, on the nightly watch list that 131 level. That was the previous day's low. And the stock got, you know, went down to 28. Uh, you know, big, big move there. Uh, Tesla, there was actually an upward trade in Tesla. Congratulations, you guys who caught this. Again, nine, you know, I, I, I talked about this. Uh, 321 needs to reclaim and to spike, right? And so here was a Tesla pivot right over here. Uh, here's a 60 minute channel, right? Here's the 60 minute channel right over here. And I said, once it breaks this 120, uh, 321, the stock can go. And again, the, the, the rallies that you're going to have in a, in a bear market are going to be very, very quick. Okay, sometimes they're going to be 40 seconds, sometimes it'll be five minutes. They're going to be very, very quick. So you have to be very proactive scaling out on the way out and use break even on your stops. But you can see, took out this uh, 321 level, went to 323 and a half. If you look at it like the five minute view, you can see how fast it actually went up there. Um, you know, pretty, excuse me, very, very, very quickly. Here's the 121. 321, you can see how fast that move was. So uh, that's that there. The biggest move uh, definitely came on Netflix. Um, this was definitely the biggest move right over here. I, I tweeted this out. I, I tweeted this out before the pivot. And again, I want to just to show you guys, especially, you know, this to show how powerful, right? How powerful the pivot is uh, when you know exactly uh, the moving parts. And I tweeted this out. I said, hey, listen, you know, here's the first tweet. Uh, 60 minute view. If it confirm and contest yesterday's low, it's gonna, it's gonna flush, man. It's gonna flush again. Here's the candle into support, right? Here's the candle into support, and we knew that 253.50 was gonna be the turn. That was the big number there, and we talked about it right here. 253.50 line in the sand. If it builds below, can flush. 251.88 is yesterday's low, so use that as a guide. So basically speaking, if it takes out, if it holds that 51.88 level, you want to use break even as a stop. But if it builds through, it could really, really flush. And if you look what happened on Netflix yesterday, just just this destruction. So here was the pivot, right? So here was the pivot that we talked about that I tweeted out the 253.50, and it took out the previous day's low, 251.88, and just got absolutely destroyed. Just absolutely destroyed. Uh, went down like $12, $13 uh, within like 30 minutes. Uh, just an absolute brutal, uh, aggressive market. If you are on the wrong side of these pivots and you just don't know uh, what you're looking for and you're trading the market as a victim instead of a predator, it's a very, very important level. So, you know, going into this week, again, until the look, could we have an individual day that the market rallies up five, 600 points? Sure, right? In the most bearish markets, bearish scenarios, you're always going to have very aggressive, okay? Incredibly aggressive uh, dead cat balance days. But again, when you look at the cues from the macro point of view, until we break this whole downward cycle, okay, we're at 147. We're talking about minimum 161, okay? Minimum. Again, can you have days in between, stocks going from supply to supply? Sure, absolutely. And those days you're gonna trade individually. But until we break the minimum 161 closing basis on the queues, at least breaking this downward cycle, don't talk about the word breakout. Don't talk about the word uh, bottom. We don't know if it's a bottom. We don't need a bottom. Okay, we don't want a bottom. We don't care about a bottom. We're not in the guessing business. We're not in. You know, we don't take hopium. Okay, collect data, understand your sentiment, which way the wind is blowing, and make sure you are trading on the right side of the market. So let me give you guys some uh, ideas for uh, Monday. For all you guys who are trading, uh, for all you guys who are trading this week, yeah, let me give you guys some ideas. They're all on the short side because again, that's where the market is right now. But again, can the market trap shorts and then kind of midway confirm upward channels, 10, 11 o'clock in the morning for cash flow to the upside? Absolutely, I have no problem trading both sides of the market. But from the macro point of view, uh, let me give you guys some, uh, uh, some pictures of where uh, we could see some strength and weakness. The only one that I kind of like uh, on the two-sided market is is Tesla. Okay, you can see clearly uh, both sides of the candle. The top of the range here is uh, 223 and a half. Okay, so if it starts building above 223 and a half, can it get to 226? Can it get to 27? Sure, why not? You know, it's a good, again, good cash flow move. Dollar, two dollars, three dollars. Nothing wrong with that, especially in a bear market. So if it starts building above. Uh, 223 and a half, 224, you get a spike right to the next supply. But you can see it right here, two candles right here. If it starts building below this 314 level, it's going to pull. And it's going to pull uh, very, very aggressively. Uh, ESRX, um, you know, I kind of like this ESRX setup here. 
Uh, again, look at the close. First close into this big rising support. This, does, does this look familiar? Look at the cues, right? Let me show you the cues on the weekly. Let me show you the cues on the weekly. You see that first? You see that first close, right? You see this first close here below support where it went. Okay. Now look at ESRX's chart, right? Exactly the same thing. If you look at ESRX's chart, first close under the rising 100-day moving average. If it confirms uh, this 92 level, and you know, this is a shot that goes to 89. Again, you're risking 20 cents on the trade for a possible $4 move. Again, a lot of value there. Uh, ESRX, uh, excuse me, that was ESRX. Uh, clock. A lot of these semiconductors just look awful. Um, clock, right? Um, again, here's the bottom of the channel. Pretty simplistic uh, looking chart. If it starts building below 84.50, you can get hit. Uh, NXPI, again, another uh, semi. Again, look at the bottom of the channel here. If it starts building below 69.70, you know you can see the move measured potential 63, 64 bucks. Keep an eye on that. Uh, Qualcomm. I know some of you guys caught Qualcomm yesterday in the live webinar. Uh, it was off the watch list. I think the number was 56 and went all the way down to 54.80s. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I think Monday, if this thing starts confirming Friday's low of 84.60s and confirm like uh, 53.50s, you got the next leg down. Keep an eye on Qualcomm. Uh, Google looks, I'm so sick. I was waiting for that 1,002 break for like three weeks on Google, and I didn't trade yesterday. Uh, that 1,003 break was big. Here's 1,003. Here's 1,003. It broke 1,003, went down to 980. I'm so sick, but that was the big number. Um, we're watching this thing for next week. You know, 980, if it pivots below 980, it's going lower. Keep an eye on that. And Expedia, look at Expedia as well. Uh, multi, multi. A uh, weak breakdown. It closed below the one hundred dollar and twenty six cent level. If it closes, if it gets below one hundred nine nineties, you're gonna have the next leg down. Again, what is your risk? Thirty cents on a hundred dollar stock. Again, these are free, free trades. So, uh, guys, it's a new year. Okay, it's a new year coming up. Uh, there's a, there's an expression that a lot of people use: "New me, new year." But I'm I'm telling you, as the day is old, if you're trading exactly the same way. Nothing is going to change. Okay, I, I promise you. It could be a different date on the calendar, but if you don't make those necessary steps to find your niche, okay, and stop breaking and stop trading the normal way that social media has really put down your throat that you have to do the whole one-minute charts, the whole small caps, you will find yourself in the exact same position, maybe even worse, where you started from. So, guys, God bless. I want to wish everybody a happy, healthy, and happy. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, with God's help, I'll see you all in the field on Monday. Take care, guys, have a great, great day.